So I'm stuck right between two points of view when it comes to just relax, it's only preseason, and what the fuck is going on? So Jaguars played week two preseason last night against the Saints and lost by a score of 23-21, to but it was kind of a concerning game. I mean, I'll say this, the offense, as we all know, it did not play great, and there were numerous three and outs and just wasn't moving the ball at all, getting third and longs and not converting third downs, and it was it was some bad stuff. I mean, it almost, the play calling, first of all, was just horrible, and it just seemed like going into this game, it was like, okay, we have this list of 15 plays. We're going to run all these plays in a row, no matter what the situation is. And, I mean, there was just not much creativity. And, you know, we're getting these third and eight, third and nine situations, and we're throwing the ball four yards across and leading to, like, fourth and fives. Like, I don't understand. Like, uh, we've seen that so many times as Jaguar fans where we get in these situations where it's third down, and we don't throw the ball beyond the sticks. So that was really annoying. Uh, the offensive line was terrible. I mean, granted, we were missing linemen. Uh, to start the game, we were missing two of our best offensive linemen when it comes to Brandon Linder and Andrew Norwell being out. And then later in the game, Cam Robinson suffered kind of a minor sprained ankle, so he didn't return. So we were pretty much down three starting offensive linemen most of the game. And it really showed because Trevor Lawrence was pressured 41.7% of his dropbacks. And the offensive line was also getting no help in a run game. Um, besides James Robinson's 10-yard run and Lawrence's 9-yard run, uh, there was nothing. I mean, the Jowers had a total of 18 runs by running backs for, thir for 32 yards. That's 1.8 yards per carry. Um, that part of the game was not helping out Trevor Lawrence at all. And when we look at Trevor Lawrence... Trevor Lawrence was 14 for 23, which is a 61% completion percentage, 113 yards, no touchdowns, and no interceptions. And unfortunately, right now, he's the only rookie quarterback without rookie first round quarterback without any touchdown throws. And honestly, like, I am not someone that can really fault Trevor Lawrence for a lot of it. I mean, a lot of stuff is going against them. I've noted the offensive line. I noted the play calling. The the running backs aren't getting anywhere. And the wide receivers that don't seem to be getting separation. You know what I mean? I look at our wide receivers. I was feeling pretty good about it in August, but, or in, you know, beginning of August and, you know, into July. But then you look at it and, like, you know, besides Marvin Jones and LaVisca Chenault, not a lot of these guys are getting much separation, and we're missing DJ Chark right now, which, you know, it'd be great to have him back, but man, like, it's, you know, Lawrence, given what he had, I mean, I thought he did pretty decent. Was he outstanding or anything? No, but I mean, um, there's not a lot going well for him. I mean, he keeps dropping it back and getting immediately pressured. He did have some nice strikes. Um, one came off of a bootleg out to the left where he, you know, threw a, threw a ball to LaVisca Chanel for a first down with pressure in his face in the end zone. Um, that was very good. And, you know, toward the end, when it comes to the two minute drill, I mean, he had a couple balls kind of, I don't really know where he was throwing, looked like he was throwing the ball away, but I don't know. I mean, given the situation, it wasn't really, we weren't giving him a great opportunity really out here. And um, I still I still have a lot of confidence in Trevor Lawrence, but you know, some of my, you know, you know, some of my angst comes against really the coaching staff and what we're kind of doing out here with the offense. Now, when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, the defense I thought was all right. Now they gave up two big plays, you know, two big ones. Um, when uh, we had, they had a guy named Marquez Callaway, it looked like he was Marquez Colston, um, five receptions, 104 yards and two touchdowns. Um, Tyson Campbell now has pretty much let two touchdown passes on him. Um, one was in the Browns game where, where a guy caught the ball right over him. And then this game, I mean, he Shaquille Griffin was in pretty good coverage. And then he went over there and pretty much blocked Shaquille Griffin from making any play on the ball, caused a pass interference, and the wide receiver still caught like a one-handed grab. I mean, that play, Tyson Campbell would have been, you know, more useful standing on the 50-yard line with his finger up in that, up his ass than doing anything, having anything to do with the play. But, you know what I mean? He went in there, and, you know, he needs reps, man. I mean, he's kind of all around the ball, but at the same time, he's not making good plays on the ball. I mean, uh, that play, if Tyson Campbell can locate the ball, he probably has an interception, but instead he's playing the receiver, just runs right into him, and then, you know... It just looks stupid a couple times. Um, Shaquille Griffin had that one touchdown on him along the left sideline. 
It was decent coverage, but a very well-thrown ball and a very good catch by the wide receiver. So, you know, and then, you know, once I, when we were talking about cornerbacks, I mean, once I want, you know, to give Sidney Jones some reps, you know, he had a guy let little Jordan Humphrey kind of burn him a couple times and not only get the catch on him, but pretty much, you know, get all these yards at their catch. So, I don't know. The, the cornerback game was very weak this game, and I didn't really see much of C.J. Henderson this game, I'll be honest. I haven't, I'm making this video during my lunch break, so I haven't really went back and watched any of the game, but you know, I'm kind of calling it back from memory. But other than that, I mean, uh, Smoot and Ward each had a sack each. Miles flashed, Quarterman flashed. You know, the defense, they let up some first downs, but at the end of the day, I mean, the, the big fault was getting these big plays on them. Jameis Winston was 9 for 10. Wasn't in there for very long, but Jameis Winston was kind of able to move the chains and whatnot and get his touchdowns. But um, it was good because last week we played against Case Keenum, kind of just a system, drop back, throw the ball kind of guy. And now we went against kind of a gunslinger when it comes to Jameis Winston, and then he had two touchdown lobs on us. So more things to kind of work on for the defense. And then the special teams. Lambeau missed another field goal this game. He was two for three on field goals. Back-to-back uh, -back games with a missed field goal, which is pretty much unlike him. Uh, so, I mean, I'm not going to go out there and cut him anything, but, you know, it's it's good to make note that he's out there, uh, you know, that this wasn't the greatest uh, game for him. And then Logan Cook had a lot of punts, five total punts on a game, including one complete shank. Um, that did not do very well. So obviously there's kind of that. Um, injury updates. We had two injuries. Travis Etienne. Um, it, they originally thought it was a Liz Frank, but the belief is that it's a sprain after some after some MRIs. So I think uh, we're going to learn more about that today over the course of today when he gets more looks at it. But if it's a sprain, we need to sing hallelujah because a Liz Frank injury is bad. I mean, that's ended that's ended careers for running backs. I know it's still early in his career, but um, I mean, we saw Corey Grant a few years ago. Liz Frank never saw the NFL field again. Uh, Maurice Jones drew after his Liz Frank injury was never the same. Um, you know, these Liz Franks, hopefully it's not that, especially when it comes to a guy like ETN with all that burst, but hopefully it is just a sprain. That would be 100% the best case scenario. And then Cam Robinson got out early with a sprained ankle. I don't think it's very severe. I just think they said, okay, your ankle sprained. Just don't come back in. It's not a super important game. But other than that, no other injuries. So we're pretty clean on that front. Now, a few notes from this game. Um, Trevor Lawrence, this needs to be announced as starter. I mean, at this point, the charade is stupid. Trevor Lawrence is getting all the number one reps in preseason practices, but yet we go out to training camp and they're giving Minshew a bunch of the reps. You know, I'll continue to say it. I think Minshew sucks. I mean, and he continues to show that in these games. Um, he is nowhere near Trevor Lawrence, and I honestly think C.J. Beathard should be above Minshew on a depth chart. Um, so just go ahead and name Trevor Lawrence a starter and, you know, stop this college football charade we have going on. We have a lot to work on as an offense and we just need one signal caller back there to be, you know, kind of rallying this offense to, um, hopefully get some sustainability back there. Um, the play calling right now is not very good, like I said, and it just seems very vanilla. And I don't know if we're still in this mode of, of paranoia where they're too afraid to kind of give off. Um, you know, anything to the opponents that we're going to be playing this year. Uh, but at some point, like if the play calling doesn't change, I'm not, I'm not playing this team next week against, against, uh, you know, Dallas. I'm not playing Trevor Lawrence if I'm going to set him up for, you know, failure by running a intramural flag football playbook. You know what I mean? I, I want to open the playbook a little bit and give him some success instead of, you know, it, like I said earlier, it just seems like we have a list of 15 plays and we're running them right in a row with no rhyme or reason behind it. I mean, that has to get better. And I don't really know what's going on there, but um yeah play calling I mean it's just we need to continue to get better um and I will say it is still preseason and obviously we overreact and over, uh, we overreact to these kind of things because it's the only thing that we have to see you know what I mean as Jaguar fans and football fans this is the only substance substance that we actually have because you know they're not out here streaming the practices but you know obviously what we saw today is concerning but at the end of the day I mean we've seen 0-16 teams go 4-0 in the, the preseason and you know, one of the Jaguars' worst preseasons pre was in 2017, and it just happened to go to the AFC Championship. But, excuse me, uh, we just we would like to hopefully just see more and to see better. But it is preseason, so let's not go too crazy. 
Now, when it comes to the injury front, the Jaguars are pretty decent on injuries so far. I mean, the only player that's really at risk for week one seems to be Travis Etienne. You know, Brandon Linder, Andrew Norwell, DJ Chark are all injured right now, but they are set to probably return during week one. Uh, we got to continue to see what's going on with ETN. It still seems like a confusing thing with ETN when it comes to what exactly his is, is his role with the offense because they're not doing a very good job of you know, doing any kind of scheming to kind of get him out there, especially with a team that really seems to lack speed right now. And ETN has speed, but they're not really using him. So I don't know about that. And then another big thing, like we need to just keep playing these rookies, man. Tyson Campbell has been struggling when it comes to, you know, just locating the ball. But we need to keep him going him out there to get these reps, man, because these reps are very important because we don't want week one, you know, him to be giving up touchdowns against Houston where it really matters. So, uh, you know, continue to give guys like him reps, Walker Little reps. I mean, Walker Little struggled mightily this game, um, you know, really facing guys like Davenport, really good pass rushers. Um, so, I mean, he needs to continue to improve and, you know, just get him. I, I don't I don't have doubt that he's going to do bad, but, you know, just a lot of technique stuff that he has to work on when it comes to getting his hands on the defenders first and not getting pushed back too much. So, um, all in all, I mean, the Jaguars, I mean, the score didn't indicate how we all felt out of this game. I mean, 23 to 21 seems pretty tight, but you know, CJ Beathard went in there and kind of rallied some touchdowns for us, which was all fine and dandy, but yeah, man, the Jaguars, uh, one more preseason game left. Um, I'm sure, you know, we're going to all digest this game and I'll have a live stream for you guys a little bit later this week. Um, and I do appreciate everybody that was in my live stream last night. We had over 300 people in there, uh, pretty much throughout the whole game before, you know, after halftime went all kind of unraveled. So appreciate everyone for being there. You know, we'll continue to do that during the season. And, you know, with all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Go Jaguars. I'm out. You guys watching the whole video, really appreciate that. You guys can subscribe to the channel for the best source of Jaguars news on the YouTube platform. Also, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at UCF underscore Jaguar. And you can become a member of the channel for as low as $3 a month for exclusive channel content. Thank you, guys, and go Jags.